Hello and welcome. YOLO, you only look once. Let's try to understand how it works. In a simple way, yet we need to understand exactly how it gives the final bounding boxes or detecting the object in the image. So what is object detection? Object detection is basically understanding in the image what is the object we're looking at, that is, if it's a dog, bicycle, a car, and actually detecting it means like we have to bounding it or localize uh, this specific object. In this case, we have the dog um, being localized by this rectangle and the bicycle and the car and so on. So what the YOLO is trying to do in principle is we'll take an image and the YOLO, maybe I'm a little bit hiding the, the, the predictions, trying to predict the bounding box location and dimension that is donated by BX, BY, BH, and BW, along with also YOLO will, will also predict if there is an object or not. So there is a probability or confidence score that there is an object, regardless of the type of the object, that is a car, bicycle, and so on. The last thing the YOLO should predict is the type of class we are looking at in this in like in, in our case for example a dog a bicycle and a car or a car so this is the general principle however what's happening is looks in reality well the network will look like this that is we have an input image and then we have an architecture of a series of uh, convolution uh, layers and of course max pooling and so on uh, in in the past called darknet but of course now we have many versions of yolo like one two three and four and like in the time of this video it's already eight so we have uh, these convolutions and then what we will get is we will have the like finally a, a feature grid we will call it a feature grid that it will consist the image will have uh, will enter as one image and then it will be outputted as a feature grid and every feature every unit of this grid is going to predict the well the 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 location x the, the x and y of the actual um, bounding box and the width height and how confident is it which is the objective uh, score and what what is the class of this object so this is basically um, how the yolo architecture works so what do we mean about the feature grid so what are you talking about you're talking about every feature grid will 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 give us um, a prediction and the answer is yes we will have an input image and the prediction of uh, well the final uh, after the neural network goes into the convolution and of course fully connected and so on we will get a grid that has predictions every grid will give his own uh, prediction or its own prediction so um, we can see here every for example this grid will give the location of this dog x y and the width and the height of the bounding box now uh, also, it will give the confidence if there is an object or not based on this small grid. What is what is seeing, and of course, it will show the class or it will predict the class. So I'm looking at a dog, I'm looking at a bicycle, I'm looking at a car, and so on. Now the thing is, not just every grid will provide one, uh, you know, estimation or prediction it actually can have more than one prediction. This is what we call YOLO anchor box. So this concept, uh, anchor box, what does it mean? The anchor box, basically, we will have um, every you know, grid unit, and this grid unit is going to have maybe, maybe two or more even predictions. It has a specific shape that is every anchor box will have a general shape for example the first anchor box will have 
um, well, a rectangle that is go vertically, and the other anchor box will have a rectangle that goes horizontally. Now, well, this anchor box is going to predict. Uh, so, what what is what is going to be inside this prediction? I would say everything. That is, it will have the x and y, the location of the anchor box or the location of the prediction, the width and the height of that box, and the, of course the confidence uh, score, is there is an object or not, and it will also have a prediction of the, um, of the class. So it can predict, the an one anchor box can predict a pedestrian or a, you know, a person, and the other anchor box is going to predict something else depending on the shape in this case the best this shape will have the prediction of a car so one grid can predict more or uh, more or one or two, even two or more uh, classes depending on how many anchor box we're going to define in our design of the yolo algorithm so what do we have now we have a feature grid that every grid unit is going to predict one or multiple anchor box, uh, not anchor boxes, well, uh, boxes, bounding boxes. So we will end up with an image that looks like this. This is the input image, and this is the output image. An image with lots of bounding boxes. We also have class probability map, which is located here. This is also going to be, you know, um, a prediction like it's going to be predicted in here and we need a way to get rid of these boxes to finally get only the best possible prediction as we can see here this is the final this is what we are trying to do we get a box that is surrounding a dog as perfect as possible and a bicycle and a car now how can we do it We'll talk about in the next slide but first let's talk about one value called intersection over union now intersection over union is basically we take two bounding boxes and we overlap them if we have two bounding boxes and we overlap them we will have um, we can calculate the intersection area and then we can calculate the area of union if we divide the area of over of overlap or intersection and the area uh, the union area we will get the iou score or the iou measurement whatever you want to call it what you call it iou so uh, this is how we can calculate one bounding box in relation to the other bounding box so again this is doesn't answer the our question which is how to get rid of these lots of our bounding boxes to get into the final um, decision. To do so, we have uh, well, a method, it's called non-maximum suppression, in which we will have lots of bounding boxes. For example, we have this uh, person, and then we have three estimations. You can see the red, the yellow, and the green. Of course, the same for the dog. Now, how can we get rid of these boxes? We take all the bounding boxes and we get only the highest objectiveness score. The boxes with the highest objectiveness score, we get them. The others will be removed. So now we have a little bit cleaner image. After that, what we will do is we will compare these bounding boxes, what is left, and if these bounding boxes are more or less similar, that is the IOU, the uh, intersection over union score is high. In this case, we have to remove them. These, uh, because they are more or less the same, same bounding boxes. Then we consider the bounding boxes, uh, well, with the uh, highest objectiveness score to be the best possible answer. However, after doing well, uh, you know, step three, we might need to again do step uh, two, and of course, uh, like steps two, three, and two, to do step four again, until we get only one bounding box with the, of course, the highest possible uh, objectiveness score. 
So with this way, we can get our answer. But this is, by the way, this is only the inference because we consider that already the neural network is already trained. So how do we train the neural network? The answer is we train the neural network by calculating the loss as always. <laughs> so how can we calculate the loss? So how can we calculate the loss? The loss in our case in Yolo is going to be, well, we start from the ground truth, which is we have an image and we have these, um, you know, two bounding boxes that a human made, or, you know, like we made uh, an inference or we made the, the data, this is training data. And then you have the current state of the network giving some estimations, even if it's random, let's say, you get these estimations and then you will calculate the loss, which the first loss we calculate, well, we calculate three losses, three types of losses. The first loss we calculate is the localization loss in which we compare the prediction of the centers of these uh, bounding boxes with the ground truth from every grid, of course, every grid points. And of course, the width, the height, uh, this is all localization loss. Another loss we have to consider is, as we said, every grid will also have a confidence score. So we need to see, is this confidence score, the loss between confidence score and the, of this grid, and if it contains an object or not, and the ground truth. And this is also going to be um, also, you know, considered in the loss as confidence loss. And the last loss is, well, the same as the normal convolutional neural network of the very simple one, which is uh, related with the class loss. This way, we can, well, predict what is, um, what is you know, the general loss or the, the total loss of, the, of every grid, and we keep updating it with the different uh, datas. So this is, we get our, uh, this way we can get our uh, network uh, trained. So that's it. Now you understand how YOLO algorithm works.